This is the third in a series on recovering biblical masculinity and femininity. And thus far in these first two series, I know I've said uh, a ton about men and about masculinity and the biblical basis for male headship in the home and the church. And in a sense, I apologizing for, for, apologize for fixating on that. Um, the reason for this is um, mainly because I, I really believe that's where the devil is primarily attacking the most radical feminism as an expression of paganism has seriously, seriously infiltrated the church. And um, you know, I did, in one of my sessions, give a brief definition of femininity, but that was woefully uh, insufficient. I would strongly recommend a book entitled Recovering Biblical Manhood and Womanhood, edited by Piper, John Piper, and Wayne Grudem. Um, it's actually written by numerous authors, uh, and they are the uh, editors of it. It's a thick volume. And um, this is one of the crucial issues of our day recovering, um, well, let me put it this way, I have thought for quite some time about how confused our generation is about the whole concept of masculinity and femininity. I think that most guys have no clue as to what masculinity should look like. Um, can't speak for the women, but I'm sure there's a certain amount of confusion there as well. As we get away from our biblical moorings, then we lose our perception on who we are as human beings, um, as men and women, and what that should look like. And our masculinity and femininity goes uh, deep, much deeper than our differences in anatomy. Uh, our sexuality, our masculinity and femininity is who we are every second of every day. Um, and I did spend most of my comments in the previous two segments within the context of marriage because that's where the Bible focuses most of its comments on men and women. Um, however, I want to say some specific words to singles. Um, the Lord Jesus the most masculine man who ever lived was single and sexless for 33 years or so. Uh, the wicked assertions of Dan Brown and his Da Vinci Code are beyond reprehensible. Uh, Jesus as a man, I am sure, was sweetly moved as a man by the interaction that he had with his close female friends like the Marys and Martha. Um, they added a aspect to his life that uh, the guys couldn't, and I am sure that he treasured it. And you can tell there was a special tenderness there. Paul was single as well. And consequently, he and all of you who are singles, and that would include me, um, 
because of Paul's singleness and Jesus' singleness, we are able to have a singular focus on the kingdom, its expansion, and um, Paul is able to focus more uh, than his married apostolic brothers could could uh, because they had they they needed to focus on their uh, their wives and their kids. Um, Thus, for those of you who are single, uh, we should use that freedom to its full advantage and not live in self-pity. Uh, we are full, full men and women in Christ, whether there is any sexual activity or not. We are full and complete men and women, whether we have a husband or a wife. As I said, our masculinity and femininity is so much deeper uh, than our physical sexual experience. So what does it mean to be feminine? Uh, I struggle with this because as a man, um, it's difficult for me to uh, to define that myself, and um, I, I didn't really find any what I thought was good, concise definitions. Um, Peter, uh, in his epistle, speaks of a quiet and a gentle spirit as one aspect of femininity, and that's just one of many, because I think of Proverbs 31. If I was going to do a in-depth study of femininity, I would certainly go through that as one of my uh, foci. Um, but when Peter does mention having a quiet and gentle spirit, he does not mean weakness, wimpiness, or lack of uh, strong beliefs. I have two daughters, and I want both of my girls to be strong women. They are strong women. And um, it, uh, in talking about femininity, it does, there's so many different, um, concepts and um, areas of response, you know, countless areas in which one's femininity would express itself. Um, for example, to flip, flip flop it to the masculine side, um, the way that I would express masculinity in certain situations as a single would be you know, opening the door, stepping, um, uh, standing on the uh, closest side to the street. Um, um, I think I mentioned opening doors, right? Um, and just um, certain things that are associated uh, with old fashioned guys, what guys would do. But, um, there's, it does mean that women, uh, femininity, respond differently to men. You would respond differently to men than, than you would to, to, to a woman, just as a man would do the same. I would, I would not speak to a woman uh, as I would with uh, a man, usually not. Um, I, I wouldn't speak to a woman with a kind of rough jocularity that I would with a close male friend. I'm not talking about ugly gutter talk that some guys engage in a locker room. Um, I just, I talk to my female friends differently than I talk to my, uh, at, at times anyway, um, in the 
short little text that I have on uh, Facebook and Messenger and so forth. Um, frequently it's the same verbiage, but um, I think you catch my point. Um, I want to treat a woman as a woman. And um, my, my point is, is that in trying to touch on femininity is that that is part of being feminine is is uh, uh, speaking to men in a way that is uh, different than you would uh, to your gal friends. If you ask me what most men want from a woman, whether it's their wife or any woman, it would be respect. Sure. A husband wants love, but I think I can speak for most guys in saying that what we most long for deeply, viscerally, is respect from women and, of course, obviously from wives when, you know, I was married, especially verbal respect. As, which, and I want to focus on that. That's a main, uh, main issue. How does a gentle and quiet spirit manifest itself as part of femininity? Well, as you recall, Jesus said that what we say flows from the overflow of our hearts. And if that's the case, then godly women will keep, seek to keep a tight rein on their mouths and to seek to use their tongues as a means of expression, expressing a gentle and quiet spirit. And it, it's, always, it's always, it has always fascinated me how James focused so strongly on the untamableness of the tongue as no other sin is ever discussed. Um, nowhere else in the Bible is, is, is a particular sin um, isolated as James does in talking about the untamableness of the tongue. And I think from our own experiences, we know that there's very few people who have um, really strong control of what they say. It's so easy to sin with our mouths. Um, no question about it. And um, so it, it's obviously a sin for which we need to be particularly aware of. Again, regarding single women, I would say that let your femininity be expressed in modesty of dress. And by that, I don't mean prudish. Um, in the way that you uh, verbally express yourself to, to men. You know, even some of you are the boss of men, maybe the employer of guys. Um, it's still important to recognize the, the distinction there. Um, you're the boss, but it's important that you recognize this principle in communication with them. Um, men want and need to be respected by females, even if it is their boss. Um, that's why... To give an extreme example, a female drill instructor is hopelessly stretching this beyond application. I cannot see in my understanding of femininity, and unless she had all girls under her, I cannot see guys handling a female drill instructor who is getting in their face, hollering, cussing, and yelling at them. That would just rankle 
every fiber of the guy's uh, being the way God had made them. Regarding marriage, once again, the main thing most men, and again, it's not just marriage, it's really, it's, it's speaking as a single guy too. The main thing I want um, is verbal expressions of respect via compliments as opposed to criticism. Um, I've said this before. In fact, way back when um, I was a preacher man, I said this, that the key to a successful relationship, friendship, or marriage, whether it flourishes or flounders, all depends on what we say to each other and how we say it. Compliments versus criticisms. And there is not a close second to that. Um, whether it be friends or marriage, the key to a, a relationship flourishing or floundering is what we say to each other and how we say it. Specifically, as I said, compliments versus criticisms. I realize that there are countless things that can cause stress and loss of trust in a marriage. A few examples, pornography, gambling, lying, just for starters. Um, and not to mention infidelity. But if you want to know where the rubber meets the road in expressing your femininity, then frequently compliment your husband. Frequently compliment your husband. Often. I'm not saying that there is no place for constructive criticism, advice, or even strong um, admonition from time to time. But on a daily basis, please, please, from the bottom of my heart, refrain from criticizing him, if at all possible. There are innumerable, innumerable ways, ladies, that you can sinfully rationalize a critical tongue or comment. But if you want your husband to feel masculine, to feel lionized like a lion, then please refrain from criticism and heap on the praise and the compliments. He needs to do the same, but we're talking about you. We're talking about femininity in this in this time. And nobody I read mentioned what I'm talking about now, the tongue. This is all coming from my own um, heart. And I think it's one of the primary ways you can express your femininity and submission, whether you're single or married, is how you speak in general, but also uh, uh, in particular to the men that God has providentially brought into your life. And that's going to look different and appropriate in different ways in the differing relationships, obviously depending upon how close you are to that person and the nature of the relationship. How can you say that you're submitting um, while your husband feels like he can never do enough or that he can never do anything right? That is, if he feels like you're always writing him and writing him, if he feels like a human doing instead of a human being, if you look at the Song of Songs, which makes 
Fifty Shades of Grey looked like the mommy porn that it is, um, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, the woman in this inspired erotic love song is heaping praise on her man over and over and over again. And it's no wonder that the fire was crackling between them. The way they were talking to each other. Look, criticism has destroyed more marriages than anything else. It destroyed mine. Infidelity usually occurs after the couple has drifted apart. And... This is not always the case, and those of you who have painful experiences, uh, every situation is um, unique. But I do know that lack of compliments and nagging, uh, constant nagging, whining criticism can cause a, your man to lose confidence in himself. Um, and destroy his masculine spirit to where his shoulders begin to droop and um, he forgets what it means to be a man. If you want to be feminine, please cultivate that gentle and quiet spirit and speak compliments. Um, and be very wary of criticizing a male friend or especially your husband. There's a place, as I said, for it. But it should be the exception to the rule. To me, a big, a huge part of femininity is a lovely tongue that is quick to praise and slow to criticize. And that... My dear friends, is my two cents on femininity. Thank you.